Hello everybody, welcome to Also Rusty Buckets. I'm just going to be honest right out of the gate. Uh, I'm really, really goddamn tired. Uh, I've been awake for like 35 hours, making sure that I could have tomorrow's deep dive out on time. So uh, yeah, go, go watch that. Um, when it comes out because I stayed up really fucking late to make it or really long to make it I didn't stay up late. I stayed up all night So because of that the fact that I was editing and all that stuff my overall like Attentiveness for the games that I watched today was not all that amazing and as a result I was actually planning on not making this video, but I finished the video and then I caught the last half of the Blazers versus the Sixers game, and that game was so good that I was like, okay, I, 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 can, I can salvage this and make a decent video out of it. Uh, I watched three other games on top of it that I'm going to uh, cover just to, for the sake of, you know, that my notes were not worth nothing, uh, but my notes are more sparse than they would normally be. Uh, it was not uh, as attentive as I would like to be, being that I'm functioning on no sleep and I was editing a video. But uh, Celtics versus Raptors, Pistons versus Pacers, and the last quarter of Magic versus Warriors is what I watched outside of the Sixers Blazers game. For the Celtics Raptors game, Jalen Brown was caught falling asleep on a backdoor cut. Uh, and that was a display of the fact that his off-ball defense is pretty mediocre, and that's really what's holding him back from being in the elite defender category. Chris Boucher had a good game in this one, I believe. I don't know what his exact, his exact stats were, but he looked good every time he was in, and he's a very unique player. I haven't quite figured him out. Um, Peyton Pritchard cannot be left open. I don't know what his final stats were, but I know he was four for five from three in the first half. I think he finished with six three-pointers. Semi Ojale finished the half with five three-pointers and I think finished with six in total. Uh, that has to be a career high for him. I can't imagine it's not. Uh, Semi could actually be a pretty good role player if the threes are dropping. Uh, so if hopefully this could be a turn of a new leaf. I don't know. Uh, Jalen Brown also in this game pulled off one of the nicest spin moves I've ever seen. If you watch the game, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Celtics this game passed the ball very well. Uh, it was They had 30 assists or more by the time I turned the game off. Uh, Grant Williams remained flawless. Kemba had a good game after sucking last game and really this season. Taco Fall had a dunk, and this was just a blowout by the Celtics. And really, on top of the fact that I wasn't that attentive, um, a lot of the games today were not good. And this was one of them. Uh, I mean, I got some notes out of it, but it was a blowout, so there was not much to say there. Same goes for Pistons versus Pacers, though they the uh, Pistons did make do a good job of like keeping it a game until like the midway point of the third quarter. But um, uh, let me see here. So Blake posted up on Sabonis to start this game, and he was aggressive. I don't know what his final stats are going to look like. I'm actually going to pull that up because I am curious. Because uh, he was definitely playing more aggressively, and the whole reason why people were saying he's washed is because his aggressiveness, more than anything, looked bad. On top of the fact he was missing shots, like he didn't seem like he wanted it like that. So Blake finished with 16 on 5 for 13 shooting, which is still bad. Eh, yeah, it's not great, but he, he was a little bit more aggressive, I guess, so you'll, you'll give him that one. Um, also, Jeremy Grant in this game, rough, rough game, 4 for 17 from the field. Uh, there's a part of me, and I, I know it's funny because I'm the Jeremy Grant guy, but there's a part of me that thinks that Jeremy is like 3% a fraud. So, uh, when he has games like this, I'm like, I don't know about you yet. I mean, I've, I was on the Jeremy Grant train as a role player. I never expected him to be a star player, so... Uh, that's just something worth taking note. Also, Dennis Smith Jr. got uh, a little bit of run late in this game, and he had one nice play and one really ugly play that I saw. He took, um, what's his name, Demonis Sabonis off of the dribble and pushed him basically out of the way as a guard on a center and got a nice layup over him. But then later on, he did a pull-up three-pointer where he missed everything. So that's Dennis Smith Jr. in Detroit thus far. Um, Josh Jackson had a filthy crossover and a, cir a circus finish. Uh, just want to point it out there that Josh, Rich Josh, not Josh Richardson, Josh Jackson, he's he has a place in the NBA. Don't know what exactly that place is yet, but he has a place. Um, then if we can get to Warriors versus Magic's the fourth quarter there, uh, Kelly Oubre drives without any plan. He did that in this game. Uh, just that's why I had that note. Um, Wiggins had a very nice backdoor uh, cut pass to 
I believe how you say his name is to Toscano Anderson or to or fuck I'm not even gonna bother I'm I probably don't know it but he he's been good for them for sure uh he's he's been getting a good amount of minutes and he seems to be earning them um I also put down Steph gonna Steph I think that speaks for itself although he wasn't all that dominant in the fourth quarter being that he had like 35 in the first couple of first three quarters something around there and that around that margin around that ballpark but um, another note that I put, and I, I texted my Orlando Magic friend Zay this, uh, why is Dwayne Bacon taking all of these shots on the Magic? Like, I understand that they're depleted, but the guy seemed like he was just calling his own number every time. And I texted Zay, and he, he said, I've never seen a man call his own number more. Uh, and that's pretty accurate. He was just like, nope, I'm going to take over this game. Yeah, it, it didn't work. Uh, the Warriors won this one 40 40 bomb for Steph, and what was ironic is to close out this game after the buzzer went off, Steph threw up an underhanded shot from behind the three-point line, and it just went in with a swish like it was nothing. But let's get to the game you're all here for. I want to talk about the Portland Trail Blazers, of course, in general, but let's first just go over this Sixers game. So Gary Trent Jr. is averaging over 20 points per game as a starter, and he is shooting 44% from three on 10 attempts per game. Uh, All I'm going to say is, I did this. My Sixers, my NBA series did this. Uh, no, but I was on the Gary Trent train. As soon as he started having good performances in the bubble, I was like, okay, this guy is going to be good. This is not a flash in the pan. And he has been good uh, to continue. This game, he was 5 for 7 from 3, which is 71%. 58% from the field, 19 points. Uh, just good ass performance from Gary Trent, who didn't have a good performance as Damian Lillard. Ben Simmons put this guy in a fucking jail cell. Like, I'm telling you the way he was locking this guy down. Like, this might be literally the worst matchup in the league for Damian Lillard. And that's the reason why Ben Simmons is so valuable. Aside of the fucking idiots that just watch him miss jump shots, this guy is so good defensively. Like, he just completely made Damian Lillard a borderline non-factor. Like, you'll see, he finished with 30, but he shot 28% from the field. He got to the free throw line a good amount, but that wasn't really Ben's fault. Uh, he kept up the aggressiveness. I'll give Dame that, that he continued to be aggressive and, and perseverance to the, the incredible defense that was being played on him. But uh, he, he did not have a good game. But uh, another interesting thing, especially early in this game, was that Ben Simmons was being aggressive. He had 11 points in the first quarter, I think it was. Why can't you just do that more? Like, part of it is that the the Blazers' interior defense is really shitty without Yusuf Nurkic. But, like, Ben, you are capable of averaging 20 points per game. Like, please just stop messing around. Please just do it already. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting my time. I don't know where I'm going here. Left leg's coming. Last video, I didn't show the left leg, and everyone got mad at me. Uh, also, what do you guys think of this outfit? I just put on the Curry jersey because I took it out for the start of today's video, and I was like, these shoes pair really well with that Curry jersey. Probably never going to wear it again, but it's it's pretty cool. Um, uh, Embiid and Ben Simmons were playing really well together in this game. Like Their chemistry was very good. There was one late fourth quarter play where... Embiid got a double team and Ben immediately cut to the basket where Embiid found him and that was a beautiful play uh, and I had a couple of other connections like that in this game there's even one possession that was really weird uh, where Ben and Embiid posted up basically right next to each other which is like that seems like a glitch that would happen in 2k but then it still resulted in points because Ennis Cantor is a horrible defender and he fouled Embiid but uh, aggressive Ben Simmons in this game, lockdown defender Ben Simmons in this game. I'd say this is one of the better Ben Simmons games of the season. But uh, the Philadelphia 76ers did not win this game because despite Damian Lillard really struggling, uh, everyone else on this Blazers team was killing it, especially Gary Trent and Carmelo Anthony. Melo in this game passed, I believe it was Hakeem Olajuwon as 12th all-time in scoring. So congratulations to Carmelo Anthony. Uh, in this game, and especially in this fourth quarter, he just couldn't miss. He he hit, like, one shot that was like, okay, that's crazy. And then he hit another shot. I was like, whoa. And then it was like, okay. After that, he hit a couple more shots. He he just he just caught fire in this game. And that kind of made up for the fact that Damian Lillard was struggling. Because I'd say nine times out of ten, the Blazers lose a game where Damian Lillard plays like that. But uh, Melo decided to turn back the clock and make sure that was not the case. Uh, I believe he had 15 points. 
in the fourth quarter in total. He might have scored more after that. Uh, actually, he went to the free throw line, so I think it was 17. Um, but very good game for Carmelo Anthony. That was that was huge. Gary Trent hit a clutch three pointer to close this game. Then, uh, ironically, after Dame had struggled all game to score, he did hit a clutch shot to give them a five point lead versus the Sixers. But that lead was quickly eviscerated as Embiid hit a pull up jump shot in the lane. Uh, ben locked down Dame once more. Seth hit a big three to tie it up, but off of the inbound, unfortunately. Uh, Mello was fouled, and they were in the bonus, so he went to the free throw line, iced those free throws, then the Sixers inbound play happened, Ben Simmons threw a turnover, so did not end his good night very well, and that was the end of the game. Uh, This was definitely an interesting game, seeing Mello go off is cool. Uh, A lot of people think I don't like Carmelo Anthony, like... I've had my doubts about how good he is, but I love mid-range jump shots, man. And players who are good at and and do have do beautiful work in the mid-range. I'm always like, I always enjoy that. So when Melo has a good game, I appreciate it. And he hit a good amount of mid-range shots in this one. Um, so that's that's that was the Blazers versus Sixers game. Hey, guess what? Dumbass said he was gonna talk about the Blazers in general, and then just didn't, and ended the video. Uh, it was Mojo ninety nine. He did it. Uh, yeah, my 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 clothes also just changed. Boom, magic. That's how editing works. I never said I'd edit on here, and here it is. So that's 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 painful. Uh, I took the jersey off and the shoes off because it was hot, and I'm not putting them back on. I just want to talk about the Blazers real quick to close the video in the way I intended to instead of forgetting about it like a fucking dumbass. Uh, the Portland Trail Blazers, they are now the fifth seed, and considering all of the injuries that they have had, basically the entire point I want to make is that the Portland Trail Blazers can be a legitimately scary team in the Western Conference because when you consider the fact that they are the fifth seed, despite no Nurkic, despite no CJ for many games, despite uh, some Robert Covington minutes being gone or uh, time being gone, all that stuff, the fact that Gary Trent is breaking out, the fact that Carmelo Anthony is playing so well off of the bench, the fact that Derek Jones Jr. has been such a good defender for this team, the fact that Zach Collins has been out. This is a team to fear. Uh, I had to pause for the burp there. Uh, this is a team to fear. Now, I'm not going to put them in the contender category, but I just want to say they are like a dark horse type of team, and they deserve credit for that. It would have been nice if I remembered this on the first take, but I couldn't just not do a second one because I said... And I'm going to talk about the Blazers in general, and then I just didn't. So I didn't want to make that a lie. Uh, fucking Tyler, the creator meme. Anyways, uh, real quick, by the way, um, my uh, deep dive video that is going to be coming out tomorrow, I guess technically today because it's still Friday, or because it is Friday now because I'm recording this at uh, 1 a.m., but um, that video, the deep dive, the second one on the main channel is available on my Patreon now if you want to pay to watch it early. Uh, not telling you to do that, but if you want to, that would be much appreciated. And the Patreon, I will hopefully link in the description if I remember. But if not, just look out for that deep dive coming out tomorrow. It's on Andrew Wiggins, and I'm very proud of the video. Okay, bye.